Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Man, it never gets old no matter how many times I do it. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. This is Eric here at Moss Pawn and Gun. We've got another video review for you today. A little bit out of the ordinary, what you're probably expecting to see. We're going to be shooting the Air Force Texan. This gun's available through Air Gun Depot. And guys, this is not Granddaddy's air rifle. This is not your little Red Rider or anything like that. This gun is not a toy. This is one powerful unit. Uh, we were out doing some velocity testing with it last week, shooting everything ranging from like 143 grain round ball projectile all the way up to a 405 grain projectile. And this thing is just the bee's knees. It delivers consistent velocities. Uh, we had a gentleman come up from Albany, Georgia, who does a lot of hunting with this particular gun, and he showed us photos of, you know, deer, coyote, all kind of pest critters that he had taken with one of these air rifles, and I was legitimately impressed to see the, the quality of the gun in person and also uh, seeing that the gun could deliver such deadly accuracy in a hunting scenario. This is a serious air rifle that is intended for hunting purposes, which in my mind is just awesome. So I couldn't wait to get my hands on one. We got our velocity testing done. Uh, we did some basic ballistics gel testing, which we're gonna replicate for you again today. Um, the round I just fired was a 340 grain cast bullet. Uh, I cast these up the other night out of my Lee mold. They drop right out of 458 diameter, which is perfect for this purpose. In case you guys haven't figured it out yet, this is a 45 caliber air rifle. The tank here holds 3000 PSI. Now the draw on these things is a little bit on the heavy side. So let's say that you're using like a 405 grain, 350, uh, 340 grain uh, projectile in a 458 diameter uh, cast pill. You're gonna lose a good bit of air per shot, but your first one to four shots are gonna have a good bit of power and you'll have to top off later. Now, if you're running the little 143 uh, grain round balls, we found that even over a course of, you know, between uh, 15 to 20 shots, uh, the gun was still delivering good accuracy, respectable velocities, and I can see the 143 grain round ball being a good option for those that want to just practice with the gun and plank, or if you want to shoot small animals, little critters, whatever you need to do. So guys, I've been really, really impressed with the Texan. This is a wonderful air rifle, and air gun reviews are something that's kind of new to us. Uh, we really haven't done a lot of work with airsoft, air rifles, paintball, you know, because a lot of folks go, oh, well, that's not gun related, so I'm not going to watch it. But I, I strongly disagree. I think that this gun kind of blurs the boundaries between what is an air gun and what is a real gun. I mean, remember, from a legality standpoint, guys, this is not considered a firearm which means that air rifles generally are in use all around the world. Historically, um, air guns have been in use since very, very early on from a historical standpoint. And I tell you, uh, the Lewis and Clark expeditions, they had air rifles and they used them. And it's just amazing to, you know, read old accounts of Indians going, wow, would well, these guys had this, you know, crazy air gun that didn't make noise, but yet people still died when they got shot with it. And, you know, the velocities were not exactly what we would consider to be indicative of uh, lethal power by today's standards, but certainly with good shot placement, uh, early air guns did do the trick. Now, um, just to give you an idea of uh, velocities, uh, foot pounds of energy, uh, we were getting just about 500 foot-pounds of energy out of a 405 grain projectile. So guys, we're talking, uh, if you compare bullet weight to bullet weight, probably about the performance of 45 Colt, okay? You know, your 45 Colt projectiles running anywhere from around 245 grains, which we do have some of those to try out, uh, all the way up to, I think on the top end, like three and a quarter, maybe 340. Uh, you might be able to get a little bit heavier in a 45 Colt, but if I had to compare it to something, it would be that. So guys, you've got an air rifle that can kill a deer. I don't know any other cool way to put it than that. Uh, the barrels, Lothar Walther barrel. So guys, they're using good barrels in these things. The guns themselves are produced extremely well. They have a very nice quality about them. And uh, I have to admit guys, going into this thing, I was a little bit skeptical about air rifles and going, okay, you know, I, I, I got with the guys at SHOT Show. We were talking a little bit about guns. And they were like, hey, you know, we've got this awesome air rifle. So I get with the Air Force and uh, we had a chance to play with this thing. And I, I just had to do a video on it. It was just so awesome. Um, 
the way this thing operates is deceptively simple. You've got a fill valve over here. On the other side, you've got uh, basically a, a little dial indicator that gives you the amount of PSI that you're up to. Filling the onboard tank, guys, is pretty easy. You're going to deal with an air cylinder that's going to vary in construction and size. Your steel and aluminum tanks are going to offer a little bit cheaper investment, although they're going to be a little bit heavier and they're generally only going to hold about 3,000 PSI, whereby your carbon fiber wrap tanks can hold up to 4,500 PSI, which will essentially give you more fills on your 3,000 PSI onboard cylinder. Uh, anyone that fills tanks can fill the tank for you. You hook the thing up, kiss her up until it gets to 3,000 PSI, and you're good. Now on the heavier pills, like I mentioned, four or five shots, you're going to be kind of on the top end of what that gun is going to do performance-wise uh, with those five heavy pills. But remember, in a hunting situation, which is what this gun is primarily uh, marketed for, you're really not going to um, be firing more than a few times anyway. Uh, also, one thing I didn't mention about air rifles is that they can be integrally suppressed. Now, how cool is that? Uh, Rick, uh, our fellow from Albany, came up and brought one of his 25 caliber uh, ones that he's done a ton of predator hunting with, and it is quiet as a mouse and still has plenty of power to do the job. Now, the neat thing about suppressing an air gun is that as long as that suppression system is built into the gun or, or unable to be removed from the firearm, you don't have to worry about any paperwork when you're working with an integral suppressor or whether you're working with one that goes over the end of the rifle. No paperwork, guys. So none of the NFA stuff to worry about. Uh, loading the gun is deceptively simple. Push this lever forward. Air bleeds through these ports in the breech and propels the projectile through the barrel. It is a Lothar Walther barrel, and yes, it is rifled. So it is, by definition, a rifled air gun. It is an air rifle all day long. Check your projectile, seat it in place firmly. Okay, and what that does is that pushes the projectile up against the lead, close the breech smartly. It will kind of cam over and hold itself shut. Acquire your target. Safety's off. The gun's ready to fire. Now, the triggers on these things are ridiculously good. You know, very, very indicative of what I consider to be, uh, I'd say the trigger breaks at around two and a half pounds. It's very lightweight. Um, it, it's, it's one of those things you have to experience. You just have to try it. We're gonna go ahead and shoot it. So safety off. All right, got a little bit of a crosswind here. There it is. Well guys, that was 125 yards with a 340 grain pill. And guys, that's deadly, okay? You heard the amount of energy that connected with that plate from this air rifle. Guys, this is an air rifle, okay? It's not a firearm, technically. Uh, I think we're gonna have a ton of fun with this thing today. Let's go ahead and get a bunch of random stuff to shoot and uh, go ahead and get after it. Uh, so far, I'm, if, unless you can you know, tell already, I'm pretty excited about it. Let's get after it. All right, guys, we're gonna make another fireball for you before we get too far into the video here. It's just too much fun and it never gets old. You know, I don't know what it is, but it just seems like when I get behind an air rifle, it makes me want to do things that uh, I knew I would get punished for growing up as a kid. Is that normal? We're just going to say it's normal. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's make us a fireball with this thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, it never gets old. <laughs> Sweet. All right, guys, twice the cans, twice the fun. I've got two spray paint cans. Let's see if we can make double the fire or set the world on fire, however you look at it. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a fire to put out. That was awesome. <laughs> Man, all right. We're going to put this fire out, and let's get to some stuff that's maybe a little bit safer. All right, guys, in our initial testing, we did some ballistic shell work with various projectiles, and we found that without any kind of cavity in the projectile, we were getting pretty much just straight line penetration. Now that's what's to be expected from a just pure cast lead projectile with no voids, no inclusions, and no type of hollow point cavity in the nose. So we took it upon ourselves just to see what the uh, you know, penetrating characteristics and the expanding characteristics of the projectiles would be if we put them on the lathe and drilled them out and made our own hollow points. So that's what we did. I've got a 245 here that I've milled out the nose and we've gotten it down to about 180 grains. 
Right here we're using a clear ballistics 10% FPI block, 16 inches long. Let's give her a try. And here we go. That looked diabolical. Let's see what happened. All right, guys, in that first shot there, we saw that our 245, we might have got a little bit overzealous on uh, putting the cavity in there, might have went a little deep. However, interesting thing to note, if we were running this rifle uh, with the suppressor integral, okay, uh, it would have been really interesting to see that on a small creature like, say, a, a jackrabbit or a coyote, you're in an urban environment, that projectile would still kill the animal but not penetrate all the way through and hurt your neighbors or bounce down the street or do something random like that. I've got one that the cavity's not quite so deep in. We're gonna try one more shot from the opposite end of the block. After that, we'll move on to try a couple of my Mad Max rounds that I put together. So far, so good. This rifle has just been so much fun to shoot. And the interesting thing is the performance of it and the power factor, you don't even really feel like you're shooting an air gun. It's like you're shooting a real rifle. Here we go. Well, she favored a little bit low, but let's see what we have to work with there. All right, guys, real quick, let's cut the 245s out, see what we're working with there. Grab our ballistic shell. Looks like we got about eight inches of penetration right there. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Check that out. Look at that expansion. All right, that pure lead projectile going about nine inches into the gel. It did have a little bit of bounce back there, but going in the gel, expanding, making one nasty uh, permanent and temporary cavity, and pretty much 100% weight retention. Uh, one thing that's interesting, I mentioned before that I did get a little bit overzealous on the cavity and how deep I went, and I did, because you can see that the base of the projectile, you know, as the projectile expanded, it blew the base out. That's probably what happened to our first one. It looks like it broke into several pieces. Uh, let me cut those out and we'll check them out here in a second because it's gonna take me a minute. I would say that both of the projectiles would certainly be very deadly on small game. The first one, obviously, because it broke apart so quickly, only penetrated eh, about four or five inches of gel, not very much. The second one having a little bit more penetration. And guys, bear in mind, these are not projectiles that exist yet. Okay, so this is something that I kind of came up with because I wanted to demonstrate how effective an air rifle could be for hunting purposes. So I'll tell you what, let's step up to some that have maybe a little bit more mass to them, see if we can get some uh, better penetration and uh, some wicked cavitation going on. Let's do it. All right, guys, so moving up the ladder, we stepped up to a 350 grain cast. Uh, this particular one, I took the liberty of hollowing out a hollow point in the middle of it. Uh, we removed about 60 grains of lead, so we're looking at around a 290 grain pill here. Let's pop our ballistic shell block. Uh, same clear ballistic shell, 10% FBI block, 16 inches long. Here we go. I love doing this kind of stuff, and again, it, it's hard to explain in the video, but when you shoot this gun, it feels like a real rifle. Like, you kind of get that feeling that you're not shooting a toy, and it's certainly not a toy. Here we go. Let's try her out. Uh, 3,000 pound fill on the tank. So this is a virgin shot uh, from a fresh tank. That sounded scary. Let's go have a look. All right, guys, I have to say that I'm very impressed with my little Mad Max projectile. That was a 290 grain. Uh, previously, it was a 350 grain. We just hollowed out a simple cavity on the lathe. Not much to it, but the performance is very impressive. We had a very nasty, a uh, temporary cavity within about the first eight or nine inches of the gel, good permanent cavitation, and then it started to dip low, and it ended up penetrating a total of about 14 and a half inches of ballistic gelatin, all right, and it conveniently ended up right here on the bottom where I can just grab it out of here. <laughs> now look at that. That is one wicked little pill right there. We're gonna show close-ups of these, but man, uh, that is just outstanding. That pure lead just really mushrooming out. Looks like we have 100% weight retention. We might have gotten a couple of bits of shards of lead that might have de deposited uh, themselves in there, but very, very minimal. I would say probably 95% or more weight, weight retention with that. All right, guys, well, that 350 was so impressive. We're going to go ahead and step up with the ballistics gel testing to a 405. Um, I don't know what the penetration is going to be like, so I went ahead and doubled up on the blocks. 
Uh, again, clear ballistics, 10% FBI blocks, both of them 16 inches long. Let's do it. And again, this is a 405 that I've um, actually carved a cavity out in the nose. We removed about 65 grains of lead out of this thing. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happened. All right, guys, well, judging by the appearance of the block, it looks like the 405 did exactly what the 350 did. But the interesting thing is this projectile ended up weighing around 350 after we carved the nose out. So it started life as a 405. We carved our hollow point. Bam. Awesome. Really good cavitation, uh, both per uh, temporary uh, and permanent. Good penetration going uh, through almost uh, about 15 inches of gel here. We're only about an inch shy from the end. Really, really good looking projectile. Let's uh, pull her out of here. See what we got to work with. Oh yeah, look at that monster. One of the things I wanna push home with uh, this ballistic gel testing is that, you know, yes, I know we sort of, uh, you know, hollowed out some of the projectiles just to show you guys some just raw performance. Um, but the interesting thing is you can go for, from a round ball, that's 143 grains, all the way up to this 405 monster here, and you can kill everything from tiny game all the way up to a deer. That projectile right there that you're looking at would drop a deer in its tracks, no problem, inside of 50 yards, probably even 100 yards, no problem. Um, so awesome. Let's move on to uh, destroy some other things. Certainly been fun with the ballistics gel, but sometimes you just have to see it destroy things. So uh, let's get to it. All right, guys. Last week when we were doing a little bit more testing with velocity and everything and grouping with this, the 405 shot pretty good. That was the heaviest projectile we ran through it. Uh, the 350s tended to give the best accuracy. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to slam this watermelon with a 405 grain projectile that I have meticulously on the lathe carved a big old hollow point in. So let's just see what a hollow point projectile will do to that watermelon. See what we have to work with there. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well, that's the trick, guys. Take your little 405s, mill them out with a drilling press, and you got your wicked hollow point. Now, if that were a little critter, he'd be done. I mean, stick a fork in him, he's done. That's just so diabolical, I think I gotta play around with a few more. Let's do it. All right, guys, so moving down the opposite end of the spectrum, I've got a 245 grain projectile that I've also turned down a cavity in the nose. Now this little devil's gotten down to about 180 grains. So I'm curious to see how fast uh, this little guy's gonna be getting out of here. We're gonna run it through the Texan here, give it a little try. That's a pure lead projectile. I've got three two liter sodas down there, back to back. Let's see what happens. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> That projectile sailed right through those two liters, offering very little resistance. Looks like it just went right on through, looking back at the slow-mo. I think we're gonna step forward, do a couple of other things here. All right, guys, we're gonna try the same shot with the 143 grain round ball. Uh, we found in our testing that these uh, tended to give the most amount of shots in a tank uh, per fill. So that means that this is good for practice and plinking. Uh, one of the things about a round ball is it's gonna have straight line penetration. It's not gonna expand it's gonna push right on through. So I've got three uh, whipped cream cans down there that are compressed. Let's go ahead and blast it with a round ball, shall we? See what we end up with. Here we go. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. See, the interesting thing about the round ball is it's cheap to plink with. It's cheap on air, so you're not using as much air. And three, you can still kill small critters if you want to shoot a jackrabbit on your property or a coyote even. That little 143 is still going to possess the penetration and the energy to put an animal down humanely and uh, plink cheaply without going broke. Let's move on to some other stuff. That was pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, the fan favorite around the farm here is Spam. Everybody always loves us uh, shooting cans of Spam, so I've got five cans strapped together with some duct tape down there. We're gonna try one of those 405s that was such a cruel contender earlier, and let's see. Chad doesn't think that the uh, 405 is gonna punch all the way through. I do, but let's, uh, let's have a look, see who's wrong. 
We'll see. Alrighty. 3,000 PSI, we're full on air because I want each of these shots to show you the full energy of a first shot from the tank. Here we go. Come on spam, don't let me down. I didn't see a splash in the dirt. Let's go look. All right guys, y'all we, are gonna learn along with me. Set this nice uh, clean rifle on this nice dirty table. Let's have a look at our spam. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that projectile is just poking out of this uh, duct tape right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, check that out. So that projectile, that hollow point that I drilled out with my lathe there, that sucker expanded all the way down to where the hollow point bottomed out. So look at that. And all of that and just that eight, or nine inches worth of potted meat and tin. So look at that. That is awesome. Ballistic meat, guys. There you have it. I wanna definitely say thanks for watching today's video. Um, we had a lot of fun making it. Air rifles are something that I, at this point, am genuinely interested in moving forward. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, there's a chance that maybe Air Gun Depot will allow me to take a look at some of their other guns. Um, they've got a lot of great stuff going on. Air Force, obviously, they know what they're doing behind this gun with making the Texan. Uh, this thing is just all kinds of awesome. Uh, I want to thank also Mr. Ward, Rick Ward from Albany, Georgia. Wonderful guy. He came up to the um, farm, allowed me to get my hands on this gun early, check it out, do our velocity testing, our accuracy testing. Um, he is just such a great guy and he's so passionate about hunting. Um, with air rifles. It was just so awesome to get to pick his brain about this. I had a lot of fun making today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.